So we are going to do a really cool derivation of the harmonic addition theorem for cosines and sines using some knowledge of vectors. Now when we look at the expression a cosine theta plus b sine theta, one of the ways that we can visualize this expression is in terms of a dot product. And the way that we can do that is taking the dot product between a vector a, b and another vector cosine theta sine theta. If you haven't heard of the dot product, I put a link in the description to my video explaining how this works. But when we do this, we can see that we get a times cosine theta on the top, b times sine theta on the bottom, and then we add those together. The question is why is this useful? And the answer is there is one other way that we can express the dot product between two vectors. And that is like this. The magnitude of our first vector times the magnitude of our second vector times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Now the reason I didn't write the magnitude of cosine theta sine theta is this is actually a unit vector. It has magnitude of 1. And we can see that from the fact that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which determines what the distance of our vector is, that's going to equal 1. So we have a unit vector here. We don't have to worry about that magnitude. And the question now is how do we determine this angle here, which I've denoted as phi? In order to figure that out, we're going to take a look at what these vectors would be graphically. If we have our x and y axes here, we can look at how these two vectors will be mapped into the xy plane. We can have our first vector here, a, b, which might have any magnitude. And then we have our unit vector, cosine theta and sine theta, going off in another direction. This angle phi here in the context of a dot product is asking what is the angle between these two vectors. So the angle in here is what we're looking for. There are two other angles that we already know. One is the angle from the vector AB off the x-axis, and we can call that alpha. And the second one is pretty obvious. The angle of this vector cosine theta sine theta well, that's just going to be the value theta. Because remember, cosine theta and sine theta gives us the x and y values for a unit circle when we go angle theta up from the x-axis. Now, if we're looking for this angle phi in here, all we have to do is take the difference of these two angles. Phi equals theta, our bigger angle here, minus alpha. And therefore, we can plug that in right to our expression here. We get a cosine theta plus b sine theta equals the magnitude of our vector ab times the cosine of this angle right here, theta minus alpha. So in order to get to this harmonic addition formula, we started with our expression a cosine theta plus b sine theta and realize that that looks a lot like a dot product between the vector a, b and a unit vector cosine theta sine theta. We can use formulas for dot products to write that as the magnitude of our vector a, b times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors, which we can write as theta, the angle we're plugging into this vector here, minus alpha, the angle of our vector a, b. And therefore we get the final formula with the cosine of theta minus alpha. That makes all the numerical results very easy to derive without any funny algebra. We know that the coefficient of our cosine is just the magnitude of the vector AB, and this angle alpha that we're subtracting off is just the angle off the x-axis of our vector AB. So that's how we derive the harmonic addition theorem in terms of dot products.